You're listening to a podcast by the U.S. Agency for International Development. I'm Kelly Raimondo. Becoming a mother is always slightly scary, but for millions of women who don't have access to trained doctors, modern equipment, or even electricity, it's downright daunting. Susan Rice is well aware of the high cost of childbirth from her work in the State Department as a U.S. ambassador to the United Nations and now as President Obama's national security advisor. It's important that we underscore that economic development and saving lives matters greatly. That's because right now, somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa, a young, probably terrified woman is going into labor. Before she's even started to push, she's 136 times more likely to die giving birth than if she were living in a developed country. So the crucial question is, how can we help her? How can we make sure that her baby isn't one of the 1.6 million who die within 48 hours of birth, or one of the 1.2 million stillbirths that occur every year. Thanks to the Saving Lives at Birth initiative, we now have some new answers. Answers like a ketchup packet style container for dispensing HIV drugs, or a platform for Kenyan women to receive vouchers for hospital transport on their mobile phones. These ideas, and 51 more outside-of-the-box innovations intended to prevent mother and child death, were on display at the Saving Lives at Birth event in Washington, D.C. in late July, where Rice gave the keynote. The three-day meeting of the minds and grant-seeking competition is part of a Grand Challenges series, where a consortium of governments and foundations ask innovators to help solve the most serious global problems. Problems like excessive bleeding or postpartum hemorrhage, Maternal anemia, which kills 100,000 mothers and six times as many infants worldwide. Vitamin deficiencies. Preeclampsia, which can turn fatal when undetected, as well as behavioral and cultural obstacles to safer deliveries, like not giving birth in a health center. One group, called Just Milk, a consortium of U.S. and U.K. universities, hospitals, and health groups, has devised a new way to administer drugs to infants. My name is Jeff Galgon, uh, representing Just Milk. Uh, so we're developing a nipple shield drug delivery system for that can be used by breastfeeding mothers to deliver drugs or nutrients to their baby. Galgan says that the current way to give babies medicine involves mixing a drug solution in a syringe and then squirting it into a baby's mouth. There are a number of problems, he says. Many babies have trouble swallowing it, so it's hard to give the right doses. Liquid formulas also often have to be refrigerated, a major obstacle in low-resource settings. Just Milk's invention would deliver the exact doses through a mother's breast milk. We're envisioning for sterility disposable nipple shields, and it would come preloaded with a tablet just at the tip, and a mother could breastfeed normally as the milk passes over that tablet, it disintegrates immediately, um, and the drug is released to the feeding infant. Both Monash University from Australia and the John Hopkins-affiliated Japaigo are working on inventions to curb postpartum hemorrhage, the leading cause of maternal death. Monash's Pete Lambert explains that his group is creating a version of the drug oxytocin that can be inhaled. The issue that currently exists is that the uh, oxytocin is only available as an injection, which requires refrigeration, it requires uh, a skilled healthcare worker, and it requires the use of a needle and a syringe, all of which are limited in the developing world. So our proposal is that we have formulated oxytocin as a powder, which is stable across a range of temperatures, certainly wouldn't need refrigeration. Lambert cites a study estimating that making oxytocin available to every woman that required it in the developing world could save 1.4 million lives in just 10 years. Also targeting maternal bleeding, Japaigo is working on an improvised tamponade, which is a tube and balloon device which is inflated in the uterus. The Hopkins Group's invention would use a plastic tube and a condom, both commonly available in the developing world. It would have modifications to make it easier to use by unskilled health workers. Japaigo's Adam Clark explains. 
There are devices made for the U.S., but they're extremely expensive and highly skilled and time-consuming procedures. So what we're doing is trying to do the cost of the improvised device at the safety and effectiveness of the expensive U.S. device. Over the three days in D.C., 53 competitors vied to be funded by the consortium that includes the U.S. Agency for International Development, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Government of Norway, Grand Challenges Canada, and the U.K.'s Department for International Development. In the end, only 22 projects would walk away with award nominations. But Susan Rice encouraged everyone in the room to keep working to make the world a safer place for mothers and their babies. There's still too many women like that young mother in Africa and her baby who continue to need our help. They need students and designers, researchers and entrepreneurs like you to lead the change. And as you do, the United States will continue to stand with you finding ways to support your success so that we can keep saving lives together. Thank you very much. Reporting from Washington, D.C., I'm Kelly Raimondo.